What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Zero to Diamond podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Carruth. I'm on a mission to help reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry by helping you master your skills on the phone, conquer your fears, and changing your mindset. Now, let's get into the show. Oh, ready to roll. (laughs) What's up, guys? Welcome to the Zero to Diamond podcast. As always, I'm your host, Ricky Carruth. Uh, today we got Chris Donaldson in the house, man. How you doing? I'm doing amazing, my man. I'm doing amazing. How are you? And what's up guys out there on the live stream? Check it out. So a little bit of background. I saw Chris do, um, you were interviewing Lee Brown or she was interviewing you. Uh, I was, uh, I was interviewing her. We were talking a little bit, um, when the Zillow instant offers meltdown was going on. Uh, yeah. Me and her know each other a little bit, and uh, I brought her on to talk about how that's not the problem and to focus on what's important because yeah. I was watching agents melting down all over Facebook, and so was she. And we're like, that's not the problem. You're worried about the wrong stuff. So, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's a good subject. <laughs> yeah. yeah you're you right. give, me, give me your thoughts there as far as like um, what it is and, you know, why you think people are scared and why they shouldn't be. Um, well, you know, to me, I I think a lot of us, I think it's easy, especially with the online world. You know, we live in a world full of people that just love to, to read headlines and get all upset about it. And what me and Lee were noting is we were watching agents of all experience levels across the country, spending more time on Facebook, worried about Zillow instant offers than if they had just picked up the phone, done email marketing, you know, the fundamental stuff their time would have been way more valuable. It would have been way better spent, but people, they just want to get upset. But my real point, man, is uh, I'm not going to found the next Zillow. I'm not going to start the next Google. I'm not going to start the next Facebook. That's just me. So I can either spend time worrying about what they're doing with their billions of dollars, or I can figure out how it affects my business, make a plan and put it into action. And that's Mm -hmm. really Mm -hmm. what we were talking about. I can't, affect what Zillow is doing, but I can affect what it does to my business. And that was really really our point. Yeah. I think that like, just to add to the Zillow controversy and stuff. Yeah, please do. Well, I think that uh, like voice to voice, like communication with, you know, people is the key to all closings. And so if, you know, the technology, I don't think will ever replace us because the thing is, is that um, like buyers and sellers, like some of them might be savvy enough to negotiate their own deal or do their own thing and all that. But most of them do not want to deal with negotiating and contracts and, you know, lawyers, title companies, mortgage people, inspectors, so on and so forth. So, I mean, there's always going to be a need for an agent, a third party, you know, broker. Now, I'm not saying that technology won't ever disrupt us some way. Maybe maybe our low our, our commission gets disrupted a little, or maybe we do a little bit things a little differently or something like that. But overall, man, real estate is such a secure career, you know, in, in my mind. I mean, the way I see it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, look, in my position, here I am running an educational institution. Um, real estate is by far our biggest division. Uh, I would be crazy if I'm sitting here leaning into our next 10 and 15 years if I thought real estate wasn't going anywhere. Um, In fact, I think that the real issue is, like, for instance, virtual reality. I can't tell you in 2011, 2012, you went to the National Association of Realtors Conference. They were talking about, oh, virtual reality is going to replace open houses and it's going to replace this and that. I mean, I don't know about your market, but I know nowhere that I'm aware of are people sitting at home regularly attending open houses on a virtual reality headset. So I think that headlines and and all of these things, they capture our attention, but our business is about people. It's about taking care of the process. It's about service. Those things are not changing. So to your point, the only way we get replaced by computers and and algorithms is if we let them, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's that simple. And I don't think that's going to happen. Well, even if people are looking or like going through open houses with a virtual tour, what does that do? Like right. that doesn't that doesn't replace the agent that's going to negotiate the deal, write the contract, 
you know, make sure that they're taking, this is like a huge, huge investment for them. I mean, they need some, they need a professional that knows what they're doing, that does this every day. And I mean, just because they can walk through, that's the same thing as them just walking through the house in real life. But at the end of the day, they still need an agent to help them through the process. So no man, doubt. you know, as little as I know about you, why don't you give us a little background and kind of tell us a little bit about what you do and how long you've been doing it? Sure, sure. Um, listen, uh, so I got my start when I was at, uh, at LSU in college and I was going into my fifth year because four years just weren't quite enough. And I made that famous phone call to dad. Hey, dad, scholarship's running out. I need one more semester. I need some money. Can you help me? And then like a good dad did, he told me, no, you're on your own. So mm -hmm. for better or for worse, uh, I'd always been in the service business and these various things. And real estate looked like something that, that I could do. Um, you fast forward through the years of trials and tribulations there. And here I am now running uh, the Gulf South's largest, still growing real estate school. And everybody here knows that first step. You got to go to real estate school. You got to go pass your exam. We do a lot of that your post license, your continuing ed. But then where we're really pushing the envelope, I think is what me and you are on the same page on, is then the other stuff. So uh, it, it, business planning, marketing, the stuff that you really need to know as an agent. And mm -hmm. so the long meeting I just got back from up in Baton Rouge at our commission, we are literally working on how we can get courses that really matter approved for regulatory credit, just a basic CE class, because mm -hmm. for so long, at least in my home state, they won't even let you teach marketing and prospecting, but to guys like me and you, that's our advantage. I don't care if it has CE credit if I learn. So sure. my background is as a humble agent trying to pay the college bills. And uh, now here we are uh, uh, at Donald's Educational Services, and I love it, man. We, it's, uh, it's an interesting business that we're in, that is, that is for sure. <laughs> so you got into real estate and you did that first? I did that first, that's right. Okay. Um, and so my story with the school starts after the hurricane, Hurricane Katrina. I know mm. you guys down there in the, in the coastal area, all of us have our hurricane stories. Mm. And, uh, you know, long story short, this was a, a family business that I wasn't going to get involved with. How many real estate agents could say that, you know, second or third generation? And um, I wasn't going to do it. Long story short, if I didn't jump in after the storm when everybody was, was gone, out of town, missing all these various things, I had to figure out, how to put the pieces back together of just this family business that I wasn't working on. And uh -huh. then one thing led to another. I started teaching classes. Then you're like, oh, okay, uh, I see that. Then the online revolution happened and we've kind of been uh, on the forefront of that. That's really got, what got me with both feet uh, in so, there. So you're a real estate agent, but your family owned the education business? That's right. So I knew where I was going to real estate school. That was about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was about it. But if you're a third generation real estate school kid taking that exam, y'all think y'all had pressure on you? <laughs> if I had failed, it'd have been it'd have been a nightmare. So okay, cool. So so how did it go in real estate sales? Like what was what was your deal there? How long did you do it? And, you know and stuff. Yeah. And why, why did you get out of it? And why did you? What was the reason? Well, I'm not ever out of it. Let's let's be clear. Uh, but. Right as the real estate education, as the education business in general has evolved, it needs a lot of attention. I mean, we're expanding across the country. We have an insurance, appraisal, mortgage, home inspection, divisions. All mm -hmm. of those come with their own set of, of issues. What I liked about real estate, what worked really well for me was that it was the only business that I've ever seen where you got immediate results for putting in effort. Mm -hmm. And I loved that. So I was never afraid to pick up the phone. I was never afraid to send the emails. I was never afraid to follow up with people. And I was just so amazed how few agents out there did that, that mm -hmm. with a little bit of patience and a lot of effort, it started rolling in in waves. So for me, I went from my first three months, like a lot of new kids on the block, as we call them, kind of trying to figure out my way to where all of that foundation that I had laid, I went from, I don't know if I'm going to get listings to, oh my God, I have so much business, I need an assistant. Yeah. Within six months. Yeah. And it was literally having a business plan and actually performing the elements mm -hmm. of it. As mm -hmm. basic as that sounds, it's amazing how few people did that. So I loved it because you got gratification for your efforts. And I still mm -hmm. think that's more the case now than ever. So I think it's very interesting because a lot of people in my market, you know, let's take that back. There's a couple of agents around my market that doesn't understand why I'm you know, trying to inspire agents and coach agents and try to train agents. 
And to me, there's a bigger purpose. It's to help reduce the failure rate because it's mm -hmm. so high. And I really feel like I have a unique, you know, philosophy behind my success. But it's like you just said, a little bit of effort goes a long way. And then you have more than you can handle. That's right. You know? And like, that's why that there's not one realtor doing all the business because there's more than anybody can handle at all times. And so, uh, you know, that's a big thing. So I'm glad you said that. So a little bit of effort, you know, and keep going. And then before you know it, you have more on your plate than you can handle. It's like, I need an assistant. So it, it happens fast. Absolutely. Right. I mean, uh, you know, and, and look, I'd love to get into to, to more details if you want, what you're actually doing with that effort, like where you're implementing it, how you're doing it. I mean, I'll go as deep as your audience and, and you guys want to go. Um, but for me, I just like the fact that you got rewarded for actually putting in the work. There's nobody that's come to me that's become, I call it a statistic, you know, not making it in the real estate business, looking to get out, that's actually worked on it, actually actively prospected, had a yeah. database they were working on, consistently yeah. following up. It just yeah. doesn't happen. There's yeah. a million excuses why, but it's never because they did all of that. Um, right. And I don't know about your market, I'd love to ask you, because everybody calls it the 80-20 rule of sales in real estate. Well, I say we're in New Orleans, so you can cut that in half. It's like the 90-10 rule. So 10% mm -hmm. of the agents doing 90% of the business. And mm -hmm. it's even worse than that. And I'm sure it looks similar in your market, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, and there's only a couple at the top and then everybody kind of trickles from there. And um, I think that's just the way it is everywhere. You know, you got the people that really understood long-term, you know, business and put the put the business together for a five year out, ten year out deal, and let and let the the accumulation of clients snowball into a monster, which is what I did. And then there's the people that just live deal to deal, you know, yeah. and they always just kind of are at the bottom, just kind of trickling by, making a hundred thousand or whatever a year. And uh, yeah, absolutely, eighty twenty rule for sure. Yeah, and it goes back to what you want, right? So I agree with you, and that's where me and you were aligned is that we created our programs, this other arm of our company here with mm -hmm. the sales marketing and business training that you don't get credit for, which mm -hmm. I always said, I don't take it if you wanna make it. And yeah. what's amazing is, is that the reason we did that was because I think the same folks that are probably watching this and that you identified, everybody likes to blame it on the person why they weren't making it. Mm -hmm. And I was blaming it on the process because they were getting mm -hmm. out of school and then some brokerages didn't have training. The realtor associations didn't have training. Mm -hmm. These folks were not failures. They were just hungry with no direction. Yeah. And so that's the folks that I'm always talking to, because if we can give you a map, we can give you some direction. If yeah. you're willing to put in effort, you, I will always be there to help you. And I know that's what you're trying to do as well, which I think is great, because this whole idea that they're failing because they're lazy, not, that's not true for everybody. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. A lot of people put forth a lot of effort. Like they're here every day trying to sell stuff, but in six months they haven't sold anything and they got to go back to their nine to five. So mm -hmm. I definitely know what you mean there. So if you're training a brand new agent, mm -hmm. a new agent comes in, that's a whole different game plan than an agent who's been in the business three years who has a pretty decent database, right? In some respects, absolutely. Let Let's talk. So from the zero to diamond, let's talk to the zero first, right? So when you first get your license, like you first get started, mm -hmm. that first 30 to 60 days is the best time you've got. And the reason is because you can almost not mess anything up because nobody knows who you are yet anyway. Yeah. Number one, right? So I'd love to ask you what your advice is. But the number one thing for me is you can't be a secret agent when you get your license and wonder yeah. why you're not getting business. Yeah. For me, like Facebook as an example, you go to people that are wondering, you know, why they're not getting listings and this and that and the other. And I go to your Facebook and I can't tell that you sell real estate for a living at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even, not that it's not in my face. It doesn't even say it. Right, right. And if you don't have a website, well then when people are Googling you, they're finding your Facebook page and it says nothing about you selling real estate. Well, mm -hmm. already you're putting out a signal to the world that you're not serious about this. So, you know, when you're brand new, it's to make people know this is what you do. This is who you are mm -hmm. and proactive approach rather than reactive. The reactive will come in time, right? The referrals, your reputation, those mm -hmm. things. But at first you got to be proactive. You, you got to, yeah. you got to make sure people know who you are and what you're up to. 
So what what uh what, what's the first thing? Like what if there was one thing, just one one thing, what would be the most important thing that a new agent should do, you know, over the first week or two of their their career? In terms of getting, in terms of getting business. In terms of getting business, like to get that role started? Yep, to get their first deal. I mean, I use any tool that's free at my disposal. So, so the first thing that I would want to do is collect every person I know, friends, family, everybody that I've done business with in the past, fraternity mm -hmm. brothers, church group, whatever you got, put them in a central place, collect it mm -hmm. all and build that first database. And mm -hmm. people get so, in my opinion, again, they're so worried about which CRM to use rather than just collecting as many contacts as you have, then figuring out what to do with them. So I think yeah. collecting them all and then doing something to mm -hmm. introduce yourself mm -hmm. to all of them. So sure. I don't care. Some markets, a letter will work, an email will work, a Facebook message will work, text messages will work. Mm -hmm. And people get caught up in those details. Well, try them all. But make mm -hmm. sure everybody knows who you are and, and mm -hmm. that you now sell real estate. In other words, introduce yourself to your market. You'll be yeah. surprised. Uncle Jimmy may have a lead for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's happy to help you. What do you think yeah. about that? What do you think is the first thing? I'm interested to hear your take. Well, I mean, there's so many different ways to look at it. Uh, you know, I um, I think I think a couple of things philosophy wise. I think that I'm not a bit. I'm not an advocate of for sale by owners and expires, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just personally, I just don't think it's the most effective way to build business. I like circle prospecting, but I think that starting out, I think that for sale by owners and expires gets you the most experience in the quickest amount of time. You talk to a live prospect that may or may not do something. You might meet them. You might list something. You might show property. You'll do contracts. Like there's so much experience you could get so fast with doing for sale by owners and expireds. Um, I think just start calling them and just start making contact and start meeting people, but have it in your mind that this is not the long term approach, you know, that you're going to you know, because I feel like circle prospecting, people aren't really getting bombarded by agents. They're more open to start that relationship for the future and uh, and really get things going. I see a comment about an open house. When I was a new agent, I did open houses you know, on the weekends. Uh, and I would make calls when I was at my open house. Nowadays, see, I started when there was no internet, basically. There was no right. Facebook, Zillow, Trulia. Dude, you, know, you don't look old enough for that to be true. I don't I'm know. I, I'm not buying it. 2002. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We got in almost at the same time. Yeah. Okay. 2002. But uh, yeah, I'd go to open houses and I'd make calls at the open houses. But I like what you said. The, the the other side of it with sphere of influence. Uh huh. I, I like what you said. Like I think that they should do that. But here's the other side of it for me, and mm -hmm. the reason I didn't go after sphere of influence first thing. Sure. Was because I didn't want to feel salesy. I didn't want to feel like I was forcing something on my friends or family. Uh huh. And on the second, the the, the other side is they know I'm new. And I figured, you know, I need to kind of, I felt like I needed to prove myself before I even had the audacity to ask for business from them. And uh, also I felt like if I couldn't sell people outside of my sphere, then I wasn't going to make it anyway. So I wanted to go ahead and go to that next level. And so, you know, now my sphere just comes to me because of, you know, who I am and what I've accomplished. But that was kind of my thoughts going in. Well, let me let me ask you the 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 follow up question. In retrospect, do you think that was the right move or maybe a mistake? I think with the right mindset and the right phone script, yeah. And then, then you if you if you're trained properly to where it's actually see, there's a difference in hey, you know, I'm a real estate agent. You know, is there you know, you know do you want to buy or sell something? And if not, mm -hmm. who do you know? There's a difference in that and and hey, I got into real estate. I didn't know if there's something I could do to help you. You know, there's a big difference in those two lines. Oh, I, I, I'm in agreement a thousand percent. And so I wasn't even saying specifically what the letter or the email would say. Yeah. Um, what I would say to that is, first of all, the concern about being new. So anybody that's out there on step one or very soon, I have a really simple opinion on that. And I think I come from a unique place because actually when I finally turned 30, this is going to sound silly, but I was devastated because I loved being the young guy playing in the sandbox with the experienced folks and kicking their butt. 
That yeah, was like yeah. my identity, right? For so sure. when I became 30, it was like, I'm just another 30 year old. I had to reshape that in my mind. Mm. Um, but the one thing that I never worried about was that new thing. And I'll tell you why. And I come from a unique perspective. I run a large real estate school. Thousands of folks come in and out of this school. When somebody gets their license, look, or even if they've been renewing it for a few years, I'm not convinced they know more about this business than you. But I am convinced that it doesn't matter. And more and more, what consumers are showing is that your experience, while it's a pillar of importance, we're more worried about somebody asking us about that than the chances are that they're actually going to ask you about that. And that's just my opinion. So, for instance, if you're worried about your sphere of influence not trusting you yet, I mean, heck, at least they know who you are. Because the worst feeling in the world is if your best friend or their mom or somebody that you're close to list their house with another agent. And the reason they did that is because they didn't know you were in the business. That's like the ultimate dagger in the heart. So um, I see your point, too. I, I think they're all good. I like the all approach. And what I mean by that is when you're new and you're hungry, you got two things you can spend, right? You could spend time and money or you could spend effort. And if you don't have any money, then you put in the time and the effort. Mm. So if somebody's saying, well, should I do this? My answer is yes. So like, should I try the for sale by nurse? Yes. Should I try mm. the expired? Yes. Should I tell my family? Yes. Should I be working on farming? Yes. Should, because you don't know what you might be good at or your unique market or what might work. So I don't think you should eliminate any doors. No, absolutely not. You need you to know? try everything you can try and figure out what works for you, what, what you feel good about and what you feel like is, uh, see, I, I think there's, the, there's, there's a lot of, most agents, I don't know what you teach, right? But, but mm -hmm. I think most agents, I really believe that most agents are good people. They care about their clients. They have the greatest of intentions with their clients as far mm -hmm. as wanting to give them that service and go over the top for them and that they really care about them. They really want to truly help them. But I think that there's some there's training out there where they have the greatest intentions in the world, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily convey that exactly to the the prospect sure. because they've been taught, you know, um, phone scripts, you know, that are or, or scripts period or mm -hmm. the way to communicate that doesn't necessarily sound like you're out for them. It's more like you're just trying to get a deal done. And I think that, that that's one thing that I really harp on. That's one thing that with, with how I try to teach people to communicate uh -huh. is to really uh, use the right words to show your, your true intentions, which is most people really care and they really want to help and they're hard workers. They're dependable, professional, you know, all that. They're a great agent. Uh, you know, they just have to learn how to communicate that to people. And, and I think that's a big thing. Yeah, I, I think that's that's dead on the money, man. And, and I think that, um, you know, where me and you, uh, look, uh, we looked at each other and, and, and we, we found what was going on out there. We know that on some levels we have to be aligned. And one of those is, look, in my business, I've seen every speaker, every class, every CE. There's a ton of people out there that are peddling bad advice, right? Yeah. Bad, bad, bad advice or advice that used to work and maybe won't now. But I think at its core, you know, we're in the type of business that's still a relationship. So if I'm going to do something for you and I'm going to be able to help you, I think it's incredibly important to be able to get that authenticity out and genuineness because yeah. people will feed off of that. And I think that's the biggest advantage of somebody that's new because I think that wherever you are in the spectrum, they will respond, a possible client will respond to your energy, enthusiasm, and care than they will your long track record that you may or may not have. Yeah, because sure. Because that other agent may not look like they are enthusiastic. This is mm. just another listing appointment. I don't care about you. Mm. And so, um, yeah, I, I think that that's uh, amazingly huge. And that comes with practice, doesn't it? It comes not just with scripts, with practicing. Your first time you answer these questions should not be when you're sitting there in front of a seller. You should have practiced those already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's but, just my you know, there, there's there's two types of education. There's the education you learn through seminars, reading books, you know, uh, podcasts, you know, classroom, and then there's experience. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot, you a lot. Most agents want to go right. To, they want to they want to get everything perfect, go right to the top immediately, and it just doesn't work like that. You can learn everything you want to learn, but then you have to put years of experience behind all that knowledge. And actually go through it for real, 
Yeah. Before you really know, guys, we are on the Zero to Diamond podcast with Chris Donaldson. Man, this dude's a beast. Um, if you guys have questions for him, feel free to type it in. Um, I uh, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, listening to it on a podcast somewhere out in internet world, you want to tune into the live show every week. We're on the Zero to Diamond Real Estate Facebook group. We're five thousand agents strong right now and growing. So um, be sure to go there if you want to watch these live Q and A's every week. So man, so tell me like where you go from there or, or what you think is the overall philosophy behind building like a long-term strong business, sustain market crashes and downturns and, and, and out, outlive all the naysayers. Man, look, what I, I mean, the number one thing is, is that never forget what's important in a business. And it's always keeping the funnel, the, the potential business going forward, always working on that. And I think where people, they get this wave of business, they stop working on the next wave to, to service this one. Then they close the last one and it's like, uh-oh, now yeah. what am I going to do? And I don't yeah. care, you know, that's just business 101. But in the real estate business, you've constantly got to be working on where's your next buyer, where's your next listing going to come from, whether that's a systematic approach or a proactive approach. You know, once you get to your stage where you've got referrals and you've got a large database and, it could, and all of that, it begins to, to take heed. But mm -hmm. you've always got to be proactive. And it's that daily accountability and activity, right? It's, it's the idea of every single day when I clock in, that I've got to be accountable, that I've done the work that needs to be done to continue to build my business. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one thing I'd like to offer, and I want to hear your opinion on this, but one thing that drives me crazy, we kind of touched on it, but is the whole idea of authenticity versus selling a, a character. Yeah. And I'm 100% a believer in authenticity because if you're yourself, you can be yourself all the time. And that mm -hmm. person can be genuine and you never have to worry. I tried to convince this person I was that and I tried to sell myself as this. Then I was branding myself over here. So understanding what your value proposition is and like you said, being able to properly articulate that to others is a huge start because really the hard part was getting in the door, wasn't it? The hard yeah. part was getting that appointment. The hard part was getting in. There's almost nothing you're going to do to mess that up. Yeah. But you can constantly be better and better and better on how you're getting the appointment or whatever. But I think authenticity is huge. I think the, the market in general, those folks are going to get exposed. Like an avenue like Facebook where we are right now with your awesome Facebook group. Like if I click on names and find business pages and there's bad reviews, it's going to affect somebody over time. Whereas yeah. if you are genuine about what your intent is, you follow that up. You actually act the way you say you're going to act then over the next three to five, those reviews and that online reputation is going to serve you super well because mm -hmm. the agents that are not doing that are getting exposed one mm -hmm. by one. Trust me, you know it's happening and we just yeah. have to wait it out. The good ones like us, the people that are good to people, do things the right way, we just have to continue the course and it's going to come right to you. Let's see. Ronnie wants to know where you're at. You're ever in Baton Rouge? I am in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana right now. Sure. We're just getting over the Mardi Gras hangover. So we're ready to I roll. You, man. Yeah, I was, uh, did y'all have a good one? Was it good weather? Uh, for the most part, well, I say that it rained a lot over the weekend. So it was kind of touch yeah. and go because we had a cold front come through. But it, all in all, it was good. But it's a great example of me. I, I like to have a little bit of fun, but work the most when people are having yeah. fun because I always get a one up on them. Yeah. So I don't take okay. the same holiday as everybody else. <laughs> Man, listen, in the wintertime when it slows down over here, yeah. that's when historically that's when I grow. That's that's when I close the gap on everybody. In the wintertime when it slows down, everybody's going to Halloween parties, Thanksgivings, uh, you know, Christmas parties and all that stuff. Histor historically, man, I take more market share each year, little by little, and I've caught up, you know, and then I eventually surpassed everybody. By doing exactly what you just said, man, I just cr when it's slow is when I'm crushing it. That's when I work. I really dig deep. That's when it's hard to dig deep because it's kind of, the market's kind of slower, and you really got to change your, you know, your daily actions change. But uh, you just got to flip over from selling to prospecting, or you know, uh, selling to marketing, and really dig deep with your ideas and focus on your goals and really take it to another level. 
Dude, you couldn't have said it any better. I mean, look, it, you, that's the difference between the employee mindset and the business owner's mindset as a real estate mm -hmm. agent, where other employees would be like, hey, it's slow. I could just mess around at work and I'm getting paid to do nothing. You've got to have that little voice in your head goes, I got to be doing something right now. I got to be doing something right now because yeah. you can always take time off or do nothing. But in our business, that's what will cost you three and six months down the line. So where your friends and employees may be joking around about, I don't have to do anything. The office is slow. You should be freaking out when the office is slow yeah. and realizing yeah. this is when I need to be doing uh, things to set up for the spring and the summer. Yeah. So, you know, that's, 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 that comes with discipline and understanding what's happening when it's quiet. I can go write the next uh, sales letter, the next set of emails, the next campaign, go reach out to my dad, whatever the case may be. Right. I mean, yeah. 100%. That's one reason I started coaching and doing this show and writing books and speaking and doing videos and writing blogs because I had like, like I built my business so big and now I was to a point where it's like, okay, you know, like I have a little bit of extra time on my hands. I've got to do something, you know? So earlier, earlier you said real estate was one of those things that you, uh, that you saw that, that if, when you put forth effort, you kind of got immediate like uh, results. Mm-hmm. You must have never roofed houses before. Wait, what's that? You must never have roofed houses. No, no, I did not. I, I waited tables and drove forklifts in a in a shredding factory, but I've never uh, put a roof on a house personally. I'll admit. Yeah, <laughs> my dad had a roofing business. We, I did roofs for like five years when I was a teenager. Oh, that's a good business when you're in hurricane country because there's always, yeah. a, a <laughs> always a reason for some more. Look, we know that well. Know that got well. a question here from Jimmy Kim. He wants to know if you had a listing appointment at 9 a.m. and that's your prospecting time, how would you handle this? Go for it. Uh, I would go on the listing appointment because the whole point of prospecting is to get appointments. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you can always adjust your prospecting time, right? Yeah. Everything, my grandfather had a saying he used to tell me a lot, and it was that everything I say is carved in water which means you've got to be willing to adjust. And the point of prospects is to get an appointment. You don't want to lose that appointment because, you know, it's in your window. You're still serving the client. I mean, that one's easy to me. I, I don't know about you. What do you think, Reggie? <laughs> I, think, I think a couple things. I think, um, I think that if you can loosely change, if you can loosely reschedule it for like 1 o'clock and then make those calls and it fits and it's okay and they're okay with it, I think that's good because then you got your calls in and you got the appointment. And if you if you say it right, if you if if you if you've if you've made an impression that you're like going to be like a friend or family for the rest of their life, then and you've got that calm demeanor and you and you're not nervous, you can say, hey, is it OK if we if we do this at one? I've got a meeting in the morning and if they don't understand or if they can't do it, it's like, OK, cool. I'll move my meeting and I'll be there at nine. So you give it the attempt. You mm -hmm. make an attempt to, to, to manipulate your schedule around what's most productive. And if you can't, that's okay. But here's the part that me messes people up. If they get off their routine, if they get off their schedule, they let it mess them up the rest of the week. Right. So I think, I think a big thing is, is if you do have an appointment or you have to show property and it messes you up on that day's schedule, don't let it mess you up the next day. Get right back on schedule and start crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with that. I like the soft approach to try to reschedule. And if they give you resistance, no, no, no problem kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, but I think if we're choosing between my sure. prospecting window and an appointment, I think that's that's an easy choice. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's sure. go get that listing, man. You know, you need listings. Good question, Jimmy. Thank you for that. So what do you what like uh, what's your favorite listing? activity what do you like to do to get listings um well i mean this is probably going to be obvious but I i'm a huge 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 advocate fan of facebook in every possible way i think facebook has been the the biggest gift to real estate agents ever created mm -hmm. and to, up to now and i think that using facebook all the ways that it can do for you Mm -hmm. uh, is incredibly important. And I mean, there's a million different things. For instance, mm -hmm. if you're looking to stay in contact with people, it's free and everybody's there and mm -hmm. it's just, it's there. And then when you're talking about the Facebook advertising feature, being able to micro target to promote open houses, collect leads. I mean, we could do this 
forever. Uh, you know, just in our business alone, um, back in 2013, in fact, right now, I've fielded calls all day because she won't give up from the Yellow Pages lady. When I've told her a hundred times, we're not coming back to the Yellow Pages for what you charge. When nobody calls, it's just hilarious mm. to me. Um, yeah. You know, years ago, we moved all that money to Facebook. So I, I think Facebook's got to be a core pillar. I love it now and into the future. And I think that Facebook, because they're a publicly traded company now and they're trying to make money, they are loving on people that advertise, as you know. And they've mm -hmm. got expert helplines now. They will show you what to do and all these various things. I think it's, it, it's incredibly huge going forward. And if we think everybody else is doing it, look at the statistics. Only 9% of real estate agents in the National Association of Realtors at their, and that are, have realtor in their profile on Facebook have spent one cent. Mm -hmm. Only 9% nationwide. So if you yeah. think everybody's using Facebook, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, no doubt, man. <laughs> I, uh, I spend a couple grand a week on Facebook. There you go. And that's that's part of why you are who you are, right? You understand how incredibly valuable that is, as I'm sure your your audience does. I don't care what business you're in. It's the greatest tool. They have database partners, um, you know, the connection between them and Instagram, just all of it. It's just huge. Do you uh, do you do you uh do run simultaneous ads on Facebook and Instagram? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, cuz a lot of some people are on one or the other, somewhere on both, you know, so you're well, hitting whatever you're hitting works, across. whatever works, but I wouldn't knock something until you've tried it with an oh. end goal in mind and give it time. It's kind of no like when people buy leads. That's always one of my favorite discussions. If I buy leads from Zillow or realtor, what's the first thing people say? They're crap. They don't work. Da -da 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 -da. You'll ask how long did you do it? Oh, a month. And then how many did you call back or respond to? Oh, a couple, you know, you got to give things time. So sure. Instagram or Facebook, you only know if it works, if you get, but it's also the greatest thing for us, even as a new agent, because you can spend five bucks. You can start a campaign for 50 and it's not working. Turn it off. Yeah. And see what you're doing wrong and adjust. I think it's an amazing tool. Whereas if you had like postcards, like back in the day, right? Once we printed those postcards and mailed them, they were gone. That was a sunk cost. There was no pulling it back or right. uh, doubling down even uh, in, in the moment. So I think it's beautiful. I don't, I'm not sure what your opinion is on it. I guess every market is a little bit different too. Do you uh, do you advocate postcards? I advocate tracking to where you know what actually works. Right, right. So in other words, I'm not against any of it. I think that you know, if you're in Orange Beach over there and condos where you've got a bunch of vacationers on an average basis, your whole setup may be different than here where I'm in suburbia with single family homes everywhere. But mm -hmm. what I'm not is somebody to say no to something before executing it. Sure. And I'm definitely not someone to say that it doesn't work if I can't prove it with numbers. Yeah, for sure. You know, for if sure. you're not tracking it, then, you know, conversion rate like for. I mean, Ricky, think about this. I've asked people before, if you could spend $100 to make 200 would you do it? Oh, yeah, all day. They care to think about it. No, they, they don't. They're like, huh? I'm like, okay, so 200 to make 400 Uh, No. I'm like, mm -hmm. y'all are not paying attention. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, so it's that, that mindset that to, to be able to lean in, but also to track, right? If you're not tracking, how do you know what's working or not working? Yeah. Um, and that's where CM CRMs come in handy and all of this stuff. Like, at your stage, when you're, you know, there in, in Orange Beach, one of my favorite places, and you've obviously put in the time, the effort, you've built a huge business. I mean, at this stage, what's something that's working for you uh, that you do regularly to kind of keep the, 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 the machine going, if you will? Is it postcards? Is it emails? Email is email, my biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. Email, email has always been my biggest thing. I mean, it's just, I mean, you know, look, 2016, I did, I, I, no social media was a part of my even life. Wow. Uh, you know, I had a Facebook account, but I didn't really use it. I didn't But post. you didn't need it. It's, it's interesting, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that, well, that's the interesting thing about real estate because, like I said from the beginning, voice to voice is the reason why technology won't replace us. You can use, like, whatever avenue you figure out to actually start the conversation, great. It can be Facebook, Zillow. You know, it can be cold calls. It can be for sale by owners, door knocking, open houses, whatever your avenue is. You have to start that conversation. 
So mine was phone calls because there was no Facebook, you know, back when I was starting and stuff. So I learned how to do it that way and following up through email. And so what happened was last year, I was like, well, in 2000, October 2016, I did a speech for Remax in Biloxi and the response was overwhelming. Like there was a line out the door. People want to ask me questions. And I was like, man, my, my message really resonates. I'd already started writing a book. I said, I need to finish that book and I need to move forward with my dreams of helping agents and stuff because people really like what I have to say. So 2017, I started social media for the, for the speaking, coaching, entrepreneurial business, not real estate. And so I started doing social media, Facebook. I learned Facebook. I figured out how to use it. Then I moved over to Instagram. Now I'm doing YouTube. And when I like really dove in deep with Facebook to really figure out, I made a lot of mistakes and spent a lot of money and did this and did that. I was like, wow, I can do all that. Mm -hmm. And so then I turned around and I started using it against my already huge database. You know, I made a custom audience of, of my Facebook, you know, of my auto of my uh, mm -hmm. clients. Yeah. And then I'm running Facebook ads against the people that already know who I am. And it just like, it's just like pouring gasoline on my business. You know, people are just like, it's, it's amazing. You know, uh, how many calls I get, I see on Facebook, this and that. So no, it's really big. Um, I haven't, I haven't messed around with the funnel click, put in your contact, get the actual new leads mm -hmm. from social media. It's been more of a brand building extension mm -hmm. of what I already had going on. But absolutely, dude. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You, and what I really have started telling people is do half and half. Use half of your efforts on Facebook to brand and the other half to try to collect new leads, you know? Yeah, I think all of that is solid. I mean, I'm still amazed. Like, it, it's such a testament to you had built a business on what's working. And as far as the social media world is concerned, you were a late comer. But look at all that's happened for you since. Oh, so, dude, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's amazing. And so for me, it was YouTube first. And that's where things got weird. Uh, it still gets weird with all the emails and all that, which I love because me and you were aligned in that. I mean, I was sick and tired of having students. I called them the boomerang. They get out, they get their license, they boomerang right back. Now, what do I do? Right? Mm -hmm. They ask that question a million times. Mm -hmm. And um, so to your point, I think that wherever you are in your business, it's the constant tracking and reevaluation of what are your efforts and what are they doing? I, I can't emphasize that enough, right? You, you saw that there was another avenue there. and Facebook was going to augment what you were already doing. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, I can't emphasize enough saying no to something till you've done it. But furthermore, on Facebook, yeah. before you spend $1, are you using it for its actual intent? Like, are you actually connecting with people? Are yeah. You, so let's separate real quick. There are lots of real estate agents that are so terrible at Facebook. It makes us all believe we're going to be terrible at Facebook. Right. Right. Those, the people that annoy you annoy everybody else too. Don't do that. But what you can do on Facebook, for instance, is have private conversations through Messenger where you can catch up with people you, that mm -hmm. you know, like, that know, like, and trust you, that you know, that you're related to, your friends. And it can be casual conversation. You focus on them. Eventually, they'll reach back and they'll ask you what you're up to. You remind them what you do. You just have conversations. If you do that every single day, in other words, get on Facebook with a mission, not just because I'm at the stoplight. Right? Get on Facebook with a purpose that I'm going to connect with this many people, that I'm going to post on these many walls, and not spammy stuff, genuine yeah. stuff. Right? Yeah. Go looking for life events. Yeah. I mean, somebody just had a kid. There, that's a trigger for a house sale, right? But at minimum, be be absolutely genuine and go tell your friend congratulations and how proud of them you are. You don't have to say anything about real estate. Right, right, right. When it matters to other people and then when it matters to you, they'll be there for you. Yeah, yeah. And that costs and, nothing. And, right? and by all means, don't go live and show people like the walls and underneath its table. And uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, th this thing is a blessing and a curse, isn't it? Uh, there, there's no doubt. But, uh, you know, like you said, I think me and you, I could agree. The phone feature on this has made me more money than every other feature. Yeah, because at the end of the day, all these different avenues are designed to either get me in front of you face to face or get me on the phone. People think they're supposed to be replacing it. Well, right. we're seeing that that's not happening. They yeah. just are new avenues to get you in the door to yes. get you on the phone, right? I yes. mean, 
Use it to start the conversation, not to close the deal. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, unless they beg you to close the deal, then you do whatever they want. Sure. Right? Yeah. Do it. <laughs> so, so yeah, take me sure. through, like when I said, what do you, what's your favorite thing to get listings? You said Facebook. Take me through how you would get a listing on Facebook. What, what would be your strategy? What would you do? Absolutely. All right. Well, first thing is, I would want to always go backwards, reverse engineer my avatar. What kind of listing do I want? Because mm -hmm. you're saying I want listings. Well, there's a big difference between listing a million dollar house down the street here, a condo over there where you are, uh, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the case may be, because mm -hmm. that's going to tell this tale of how I'm going to go back and get that person. So mm -hmm. if I'm a new agent and I'm in my mid 20s and we're dealing with first time home buyers, well, now I'm going to think about, well, where are they? They're on Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. right? So, okay, now I know where I'm likely to find them. So what am I going to do? Well, what are they curious about? Well, Facebook has an audience you can market to that says people that are thinking about set moving. I mean, it's an audience already built into Facebook because Facebook is crawling our private message conversations, your mm -hmm. post, everything out there, plus extraneous data that they're bringing in. So I could literally, what's the first question that somebody's wondering that's thinking about moving? What the first, what's their house worth? Yeah, they're always thinking about that, right? But you don't want to go spammy. What if you hit them with an ad with a, with a, a beautiful image or, or, or a picture that literally Facebook's lead ads pre fills it for you with their information. So it removes resistance and then you actually follow through with what they asked. What's pretty amazing about that is, in other words, I can go straight at the type of person I'm trying to reach. I could set up a B testing this video and this picture and this picture and this ad and I can see which one's working. Facebook will tell me within 48 hours, I'll double down on the one that's getting response. And then what's my conversion? What if I get 10 people that click that form because they're curious what their house is worth? You actually respond and then one of those turns into a listing. How often would you do that? Yeah. And that really works for me. And the reason is, is because it, it's not spammy and it's actually, it's, it's taking the Google approach to Facebook, which means you're hitting them with the question they're already going to ask when they're looking for the answer. So rather than going to type in Google, what is my house worth? And they end up on a Zestimate. When they're thinking about it, you serve them an ad right there on Facebook, right on their news feed. It really works. And I'm not sure why more people don't do it. Okay, so so you say that there's already a custom audience that Facebook does that said people that are thinking of moving? Yep. Or people that are likely to move, it may be called. They've wow. adjusted the name a couple of times. But it's an automatic audience that's already in there. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Facebook loves real estate agents. They want your money. They want to take the attention away from Zillow and Realtor.com. They want it. So they're helping you give it to them. Okay, I'm, I'm putting together some Facebook ads real quick, man. Give me a sec here. <laughs> What's that? I'm putting together What's some that? Facebook ads. <laughs> well, like I said, I mean, since we're talking about uh, these are just things, you know, the Google approach to Facebook, answering people's questions when you know they have it because Facebook's telling yeah. you. Yeah, that's that's beautiful, man. That is so beautiful. Thank you for that, man. I'm sure a lot of people are going to enjoy hearing that. Kyle Brown says you can create a list of your past clients and when you open that list you only see their post uh then you just scroll through like com uh, the like comment boom 20 minutes and Beautiful. you can get with 50 of your best marketers absolutely yeah. kyle's obviously more on the diamond side probably if he's got that many uh that many past clients 100 percent by using friends lists on your facebook page you can pull up a news feed with exactly who you want to talk to so if it's for your past clients, you could pull up their news feeds and only be liking, commenting, and engaging. I love that, Kyle. You're dead on. That was uh, okay. So you do that with their emails. You can create the uh, list like that. Well, both. One is okay. Let let let's take a step back because you asked me specifically about listings. But if I'm an agent and I haven't done this yet, the first thing you do is take your database and you upload it as a custom off audience. Right. 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 So, right. If we had covered that, you that's like a no-brainer. Yeah, I've got video tutorials on that. Good, beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you've got to do that. Yeah. Facebook's going to go find those people for you. Um, and then uh, what, what Kyle was, was augmenting what we were talking about earlier is as part of your prospecting time, whatever your window is, that yeah. should include Facebook with a purpose. 
which mm. means you're not just scrolling around or whatever. You're getting on there with a purpose. I'm going to connect with 10 people. I'm going to, whatever your list is. I, I use a three, six and nine approach, but whatever it is where you're starting conversations, you're adding comments, you are being genuinely interested in other people. And it's just using social media for what it's for, which is social. But then the second part is Facebook's algorithm is going to continue to help show you to them because Facebook has already shown us they're emphasizing the personal side more than the shove things in their face side. So if you're genuinely posting on people's things, you're more likely to be seen by them as well. Sure. And, way, and, yeah. and, and let me just add to, to the conversation to, to not only do ads to collect information and stuff, but to also bring some value in there somewhere about good restaurants, events, uh, things going on, stuff like that as well. And maybe even some inspirational stuff as well, just to drive engagement and then touch people on a different level than just the standard, hey, you want to sell your house or here's a listing and stuff like that. Is that something you would uh, agree with? A hundred percent. I mean, the biggest thing you can do as a real estate agent is be engaged in your, at least your farm, the mm -hmm. place you want to do market. So, mm -hmm. um, on Facebook, that gives you the absolute opportunity to get in front of those people with stuff that has nothing to do with real estate. Be helpful when people are looking for suggestions, right? Somebody mm -hmm. needs a handyman or a restaurant or a this or a that, comment and help them out. Like you're yeah. just being part of the community. So Facebook's replaced, you know, the neighborhood bar in some ways, and you're having yeah. those conversations at scale. And if you're doing that all the time, it's going to pay off over time. Because yeah. for me, it's incredible how many private Facebook messages I get. Uh, whether it's I need a CE course or, or, or uh, my friend's selling their house or this or that or the other. And you hadn't talked to them in six months or six years, but everybody can be found on Facebook and then hit up through Messenger. So um, I think that's incredibly important. And, and you know, we could talk about bots and automating that, but why when you could put 10 minutes of effort in and get a lot of return? Sure. Um, so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that, that's monster. And I think that people get offended with Facebook when they set up like their Facebook business page as an agent and they post a new article and nobody sees it. Yeah. And I think you got to take your personal feelings out of it and realize you're branding every time you do that. Yeah. Don't stop. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's important. And over time you'll figure out what you get engagement, but Facebook is telling you right now, you're going to have to pay to put that stuff in front of people. Doesn't have to be a lot, but five, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, you post that blog and then you put it in front of your database or you put it in front of your farm. Now we're getting somewhere. So how, what percentage of realtors did you say use, use Facebook? The last statistic I got now let's talk about not on Facebook, but actually have spent a dollar minimum on Facebook ads. Facebook's own statistic was 9%. Only 6% of businesses in the world even have a credit card on file with Facebook. So, guys, we we are nowhere yet. Yeah, yeah, it's it it hasn't even begun. <laughs> Facebook's biggest concern is running out of space to serve you ads. They're already working on that. Right, right, that's right. Yeah, that, that's going to be the problem. I mean, what are they going to do? Double feeds? I mean, <laughs> you know, raise the price. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The yeah the price is going to go up. There's no uh, doubt. The price per conversion is going to start to hurt. <laughs> You know, Amazon, you know, Google, Google's biggest client back, uh, back in the early 2000s or whatever was Amazon. Amazon literally built their entire, like got famous basically on Google using Google AdWords. It's the same thing with Facebook right now. You can literally use it. I mean, it's what I'm doing in the coaching world. I mean, I'm spending, I'm actually about probably breaking even, but I'm gaining so much traction with people who know who I am, what my message is. And, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely hasn't even started. So man, I, I love how you brought that into the conversation. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, just for me, I mean, I've had competitors that I've been waiting for since 2012 to serve up their first Facebook ad. And for the first time in 2018, one competitor, I saw their first Facebook ad ever. I was like, you gave me a six and a half year head start. You are in trouble. And, uh, you know, so fellow agents, what I would say is there's classes, there's people like me and Ricky, the, 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 the flood is not yet even here yet. 
Facebook is still figuring out their real estate play. Let's be honest here. Mm -hmm. They're coming. They want your attention. They want to take it away from Zillow and Realtor.com, and they're going to figure that out. So the biggest thing is if you got money to spend, use it on what your intention is. Like you, you're at the branding phase of your career. If mm -hmm. I'm genuinely trying to generate interest. But then what also happens is if you have an open house, and you could put a beautiful ad out there and you get a ton of comments and likes. It doesn't have to sell the house, but it becomes a marketing piece. You can show future sellers on what you're going to do. I did that. I did an open house and I ran a Facebook ad about it. I did a video with my phone of the house and then, and then I ran an ad with the video a video ad for like two days before the open house. And I had so many people show up and so many likes, comments, shares. Love it. And the owner, the owner saw it on his feed. Like he woke up as like six o'clock in the morning. He saw the ad for it on his feed and he called me. And he was like, dude, this is crazy. You know, he was super excited that I was, that I had done that. So no, it's, and then I, I spent about $75, you know, on that. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, look, it goes back to the, it's one of the core things I will say forever. You've got two things you can spend. You've got money or time and effort. And if you refuse to do either, you're not going to make it. Right. Yeah. So if you're not going to spend seventy five dollars, then you're going to have to make up for that in the efforts you're going to put forth at the open house. That's way more efficient. Mm -hmm. Right. And it becomes now a case study. You could show future sellers and all those various things. You yeah. know, every market's a little bit different. But the one thing we know is everybody's on Facebook. But, you know, Ricky, the other thing I would say is, is that let's not forget about the offline. And I think that the most important thing that we need to remember is at the end of the day, we're in a business where we're supposed to be serving and helping someone else. And I think that where a lot of people, even great agents get it wrong, top producers are starting to, 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 to struggle a little bit in some areas is because they focus all of their marketing on themselves. Their entire message is on themselves. It's all about how great I am. Look how much money I made. Look at my awards. And while that can be an augmenting piece, why don't we flip it around and start making sure that the consumer who's increasingly shopping around for all services and products, including real estate, knows that Ricky and Chris care about what you want. And the way we do that is center our marketing, our conversations, our message around the other person. And then everything else takes care of itself. So mm -hmm. when people say, I don't like the term sales, well, that's because you've been sold poorly to by a bad salesperson. But a great salesperson, I'm not afraid to say I'm in sales because a great salesman asks you what your problem is and then shows you how they can solve it. Sure. Right. And, and I just think that there's far too much tell, throw, yell, you know, brag about myself. And the consumer increasingly is telling us they care more about what other people say about you yeah. than you say about you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, man. Hey, when I became number one and stuff a couple of years ago, I started posting it and put it everywhere. And what I realized was is that nobody cares at all. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody you know, cares. You know, it's the, something to be super proud of. But the yeah, the consumer doesn't care, right? <laughs> I got the least amount of engagement. I got the least amount of people that said, you know, like it was just uh, the first time I did it. I had a lot of congratulations and stuff. But then year two, it was like, OK, Ricky, we get it, you know, whatever. So, man, I'm going to let's end it with this. What would you say in one in in let's see in four words, you know, whatever, less than five words. What's the number one reason why prospects choose a particular agent? Well, let's see. In four or five words, I'm going to go away from what the statistics say and all of that. I'm going to say because they know and trust you. What the know and trust are the most important parts. What do the statistics say? The statistics? Yeah. The statistics say that 70% of the consumers work with the first agent that they actually have a meeting with. So statistically, the hard part is getting the appointment, which is I don't care about what happens as much within the appointment. I think we get it's important, but it's not everything. Right. Because most people don't want to – if Ricky and me are both scheduled to go to the same seller and we're competing, I want to be first. Because there's almost no chance Ricky's going to even get there. And that seller is going to be not willing to go through that whole listing with another agent. Like the, yeah. Consumers just aren't shopping for us as much as they think. They need to know us and they need to trust us at the moment they're making that decision. Right. I like it, man. I like it. Thank you, any, man. Any Appreciate it. Words? 
No, I appreciate you having me on. I, I really do. And uh, all you guys out there, what, yeah, of course, of course. And, and everybody out there, um, look, just keep doing the right stuff. Keep putting in the work. Listen to what Ricky's telling you. And look, keep an eye on where you get your advice. Getting advice from a guy like Ricky is valuable because he's done it and he's still doing it. There's always people in your office that are going to give you bad advice, tell you things don't work, and I want you to consider the source. Be really careful where you get your info. Good stuff, man. Absolutely. Dude, this has been incredible, man. I just appreciate it so much. Guys, we're going to call that a day. If you need something from me or Chris, reach out. Um, what, uh, Chris, tell, I mean, tell them real quick like how they can get in touch with you and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Um, so I'm the, this, the owner and CEO of Donaldson Educational Services. Uh, the best way to find me is on my personal website, which is chrystalks.com. Very simply, chrystalks.com. What I'd love everybody to do is to visit the Office Hours page. Mm -hmm. And the Office Hours page is the home base for my video podcast that I've been doing for two years now. And there's hours and hours of free and tactical info on there. There's no hook. There's no catch. So for instance, I've had the vice president of realtor.com on, Lee mm. Brown, and everybody in between. Ricky is surely going to say yes and come on soon. So chrystalks.com, go to the office hours page and check that out. And then I'm a big fan of Twitter. Come find me on Twitter at Chris Talks Daily. I'd love to see you guys. So cool. Ricky, you are, I think we're still live, but your camera is dark. So now it's my show, is I suppose. Really? Um is it really? Can I'm going to let him keep pushing the buttons, but all of you guys out there, hit me up on Twitter or can definitely me? send me a message on Facebook because just as, as Ricky can share, I want to see the next Hello? generation.